One of the other very interesting aspects of the quick commerce uh, evolution and very short period of time has been uh, the kind of explosion that we've seen uh, through the distribution pipes of quick commerce uh, channels like yours, companies like yours. I mean, uh, the belief was that it would be the groceries and the staples that would be uh, out of the pipes uh, right up front. But today, I mean, electronics, home appliances, fashion, lifestyle, cosmetics. I mean, the SKU enhancement has just been diverse and deep. Yeah, absolutely, Shri. And I think if you if you look at sort of the categories that are growing rapidly on Zepto today, you see categories like, for example, toys, one of the fastest growing categories we have on the platform, right? Beauty and cosmetics. Uh, we've got low ticket jewelry, right? Those sort of few hundred rupee bangles, rings. They sell especially well during event periods. Uh, even if you look at things like uh, fast moving apparel, right? The likes of you know excellent brands like Jockey, um, and even sort of appliances, hair dryers, you know, switches, faucets. All of these things are selling incredibly well. So we're just, you know, we're, we're happy to see the demand. I think once people experience quick commerce, there's no going back. They get addicted to that that buying flow. And more importantly, I mean, I think if you, you know, if you've got, you know, today we've got over 20 lakh people that open up the app every day with the fastest growing, you know, internet platform in the country. Uh, and so is quick commerce in general as a category as well, right? Uh, and, you know, we're a platform that grew 150% plus year on year on a base of thousands of crores of scale. And we're still growing multiples every year, right? We're not growing in percentages. We're still growing in, in multiples. We should go clock well over a thousand crores, obviously well over hundred percent year on year growth in FY25 as well as things stand at least we're, we're hopeful. So when, when brands see that level of growth and that level of adoption, this efficiently, um, they jump onto the opportunity. So we had this phenomenal pipeline of brands that are coming out of the platform with interest to join. And we've got a, a very strong demand pool right now with, with the tailwind there. The last thing I'll say is there are also new categories that people aren't, aren't uh, you know, indexing on, like meat. Your meat and seafood for us, we, are, we launched our own private brand of meat, Relish. It's, you know, within a few months, four months effectively, it's become a 150 crore brand and it's growing 20 to 30% a month. We think in 12 to 15 months, this can become a 1,000 crore brand. And that's an in-house meat and seafood brand, right? So... It's not just beauty and cosmetics in a panel. I think there are these these other big ticket opportunities where we can really sort of consolidate. I mean, we can really consolidate them and become a, a horizontal e-commerce player. Uh, so, so yeah, we've been positively surprised by the demand. And all of these new categories are incremental to profitability. They're higher AOV and higher margin than baseline FMCG. Uh, you know, Adit, that's an interesting point that you mentioned. And let me uh, get you to build on that. You talked about this in-house meat and seafood brand that you've been able to uh, incubate and grow. Uh, is that going to be part of the growth strategy, creating more private labels uh, and building those out as well? And then how do, how, do you not get seen as, how do you not get seen as competition for the brands that you're carrying? It's a good question. Uh, you know, the way that we look at it, for uh, certain categories, right, like meat and seafood, where we feel we can add disproportionate value to the customer. You know, we have very strong sourcing and supply chain muscle. We built out one of India's largest fresh fruits and vegetables supply chain. We do over 5 lakh units a day of fresh fruits and vegetables through our, you know, back-end supply chain that's in-house, right? We go directly to 3,500 farmers across the country with a network of collection centers and distribution centers, and we're sourcing fruits and vegetables directly. So we had that, the muscle of sourcing perishable products, managing the cold storage, of perishable products and even managing the forecasting excellence of perishable products to bring down wastage as much as possible and make it a profitable category for us. And we were able to use that muscle and say, hey, meat and seafood is an opportunity where we can add disproportionate value given the DNA of the company with fresh fruits and vegetables. Um, and so that was an opportunity where we saw disproportionate value. If you look at the other core FMCG categories, you know, we don't look at, let's say, competing with the large partners on the platform because we feel like they've already done a phenomenal job serving the customer in the use case, right? Mm. The likes of a Unilever or a Procter & Gamble or a Dabur, uh, yeah. where you've got sort of already fantastic products that are well established in the market. But we see there are white spaces that FMCG hasn't covered when, when there's a big opportunity on the table, right? And that's where we are investing in private label capability. So you'll start seeing that grow in FY25 pretty rapidly on Zepto. We should get to, I mean, we've but, taken but some... Uh, go ahead. No, very quickly, which are those white spaces that you intend to focus on and what's the outlook in terms of uh, uh, launching more categories over the next year or two? So we're going to launch more categories. Uh, we're launching, we've only launched five categories in the past 90 days. And look, I mean, I think there's, you know, people say there's an opportunity to compete with Amazon Flipkart. That, you know, 
potentially is on the cards, but the way that we look at it is the existing business is, is so large and the opportunity is so big, we'd rather just put our heads down and focus on that. I mean, to give you a sense, we're only 5x away from DMART scale, which is a $30 billion company, and we're growing 2 to 3x every year, and DMART is growing 15-ish percent year on year, adjusted for goods inflation. So, you know, we could be a DMART scale company in the next two, three years, uh, and that's an opportunity we want to focus on. So yes, we can compete on Amazon Flipkart, launch a lot of categories. My core focus is cracking the big, high-frequency, low-ticket categories that are really giving us a lot of scale. And down the line, we'll see what happens. Um, but uh, but there, there could be an interesting opportunity horizontally in more categories. But right now, we're, we're deeply focused on the opportunities at hand and the new categories that we just uh, launched. What? Adit, I have to give you full points for confidence. Uh, we could be a DMART scale company in the next two to three years. Uh, uh, that's the big statement yeah, coming brother. in here from Adit. <laughs> from Adit yeah. Palicha. But uh, Anshu, Anshu, let me come back to you. You know, to Adit's point, and, and uh, I think you alluded to that, is there space for e-commerce, quick commerce, for the kinds of models that uh, you're hoping to build out as well uh, on the back of ONDC and so on and so forth, given the fact that, you know, as the Bloom report recently showed us as well, that the consumption, the true consumption class in India is still small at 30 million. And then, of course, the aspirational Indian, the hope is that that, Pie will grow, but you know we're still talking about you know actual consumption class of 30 million. Is there space for everyone? There is absolutely. I think the existing market for e-commerce is that trillion dollar market, right? And it's becoming more and more uh, uh, tilted towards uh, experiences that people want to have, um, the right kind of specific niche use case that they want to have. As India's disposable income is growing up, and I, I think we would see that. Players who are able to, whether it's first party, like what uh, others is doing, or whether people like us who are able to bring the existing merchants that users are familiar with online, they would stand to start to see the volumes come through that. In fact, like even in our case, we've, we've doubled twice in the last two years. We were 4x of our scale versus what we were 24 months back. And given the way our business model is run, the, the inventory is carried by the merchants, right? We don't solve for that. Um, uh, we solve for experience for the user, we solve for the logistics, we enable them to be able to participate in India's large and growing digital economy. And there's very keen interest from these merchants to be able to be there. If you look back, right, you look back a decade, the offline retail ecosystem has been under threat, organized retail came, everyone said, what will happen to this retailer? Then e-commerce came, everyone said, what's going to happen to this retailer? 90% of yeah. retail continues to be offline, right? So we are long on the local merchants and saying that we would digitize them, bring them online, and the consumers know them, they're familiar with them, they provide a specific use case. So to that extent, yes, there is a clear opportunity for both the new internet models to exist and serve a specific need and a segment. And similarly, the, the local retailers in our country also being able to participate in this growing online economy. Well, one thing is for sure that uh, for many large brands, for many large FMCG companies, the muscle, the moat was really distribution. And what we are seeing very clearly happen with what Adit is doing at Zepto or what Anshu is doing at Magic Pin is that that no longer is, uh, uh, is as uh, unpenetrable uh, of a moat. Uh, so that is something that people will need to worry about, that kind of disruption that is taking place. Adit, very quickly, uh, you know, you gave us a whole list of numbers. Uh, uh, IPO when? Yeah, th you're putting a lot of pressure on me, Shreed. Uh, but look, I think there's <laughs> there's a there's a good amount of growth on the on the table right now, and and uh, you know I think long story short, you know we would be excited to tap public markets if we're able to raise capital and a return on equity. I mean, and raise capital and deploy that capital and return on equity agreed away. Take this business to a very high TAM grocery outcome. I think public markets might be excited about that. So, you know, we are currently tracking towards, you know, 18 to 24 months from now, we're building out a lot of the infrastructure we need to go public. So, 18 to 24 months, hopefully. But please don't, you know, quote me in 18 to 24 months saying, oh, it was, where's the IP? <laughs> Business yeah, is dynamic. No, no. Right now. We, we... No, I, I understand that. We, we, won't, we won't hold you to that number, but that is, uh, that is the timeline that you're working with, an IPO possibly 18 to 24 months down the line with all the caveats attached. Uh, Anshu Sharma and Adit, it's been an absolute pleasure. Many thanks for joining us uh, to talk about uh, the many changes that we're seeing in India's quick commerce story as well as retail landscape uh, and what companies like yours are trying to do to leverage uh, the evolution. Thanks very much for your time. We'll speak with you shortly again.
again uh, to find out what else is moving in the market. That's a wrap on this edition of Young Turks from all of us here on the team. Goodbye and many thanks for watching. Thank you.